Lads, would Arsenal be disappointed with that result that won all draw given that they had so many chances throughout, throughout the game? I think so, yeah. I think Arsenal are, are, are a superior team to Benfica. I think their dominance in the first half, they'd be disappointed that they didn't kind of convert that early dominance into more chances. Aubameyang had a, a, a few chances, but it was a relatively good performance from Arsenal. Um, and, and I think they have enough to get through the, uh, the return leg at, uh, at Highbury. How do you think they got on, Brian? Well, they controlled possession in the match. They were certainly the better team. A kind of slight, slightly debatable penalty, I think, got um, got uh, Benfica ahead against the run to play in general. They were a little bit better in the second half, Benfica, because they contributed nothing, nothing in the first half. They were slightly more adventurous as well. But Arsenal controlled the game, controlled possession, and um, I agree with Damien. The chances they had, they should have won the match. I mean, at this level, you don't usually get such clear-cut chances or they don't keep coming as frequently um, all the time. And Obama Yang particularly will be annoyed with himself that he didn't score one of the clear-cut chances he had. But they have it under control now, 1-1, um, going into the, the, the leg at the Emirates. It doesn't really matter the home or the away thing. But they've proved they're the better team tonight and they put out their strongest side. And they should be able to win the game. But they will be remembering what happened to them against Olympiacos last year when they were a little bit too... too cautious and didn't finish off Olympiacos when they had a lot of uh, opportunities and they got done at the, at the end of the game and lost 2-1. So uh, I think they've done, done all right tonight. Yeah. But you spoke earlier about how important this competition is, is to them now. Um, how far do you think they can go? Well, we, based on the recent history of the competition, we've seen the English teams, we've seen you know, Chelsea and Arsenal in the final. Um, we've seen Chelsea winning it, um, and, and Manchester United beaten in the semi-final last year by Seville. Probably should have won that game, but they didn't. And you know, it was a big final, Seville and Inter Milan. What, what that proves to me, I think, when the English teams put their minds to it, with the squads they have, they are well capable of winning this competition. But what you now have this year is that some of the Spanish teams, like Sociedad tonight, weren't good enough at all. They were nearly out of their depth, you'd say. But Villarreal are still in the in the in that competition, and Granada, who are the next teams around Sociedad in the Spanish league. But they've also got three top Italian teams: Inter, Roma, are still in the in the, in the competition. Uh, it was a tour, tour de Italia, Napoli. Napoli yeah. So you got three top Italian. In previous years, before UEFA introduced the automatic qualification for the Champions League for the winners, the Italian teams didn't feature. They weren't interested in the competition. A lot of the Spanish teams weren't particularly... It was actually dominated by, by Shakhtar and um, the Russian teams uh, actually had a period, apart from Sevilla. And what you get now is that the big league teams are now saying this matters. And Lille are first in the in the French league, they're still going the competition. So I think it's going to be harder for the English teams to win it than it was a few years ago. That's something to look forward to anyway. Um, um, Damien, Arsenal started better in the second half but were sucker punched um, and Benfica went ahead then. Yeah, Benfica barely deserved um, anything from the game really. There was a real lethargic performance from them. Um, but you, you feel that in the, in, in, in the second leg, you know, the team is capable of, of, of a performance and here is a a really well worked uh, corner routine for the penalty here. Debatable, Brian. Is what you're well, I, look, at it. I hate these penalty kick situations. I think he, he, he went to torn away. It was his hand, his arm in an unnatural position. That's what the referees are calling it now. But I think he, there was no intent on his part. But look, he, he, you're wasting time fighting these things nowadays. They just seem to have made them mind up to give as many penalties as they possibly but we'll can. But we'll the law, Damien, a penalty. Is that yeah, what it is? I mean, look, I mean, when your hand is up that high and, and, and the ball comes in, I, mean, I think it's debatable whether it actually hit him on the hand. I mean, maybe it came off his face or maybe his shoulder area, his armpit, possibly, you know. But I mean, if the ball hit, clearly hits his hand and his hand is up that high, that that is the letter of the law, but I think if you slow it down a little bit, it's debatable whether it actually did hit his hand. Yeah, we saw Pizzi take the penalty there as well. He's the first Portuguese player to score at least seven goals in European campaign since Eusebio. <laughs> 
preventing. You say there was a mad. That's a good. It? That's a good way to go because I, I even saw him playing. I was in short trousers at the time, so it's a good bit back. <laughs> well, he's in good company anyway. Um, Arsenal got him back then less than two minutes later, Damien. Yeah, really well work all from, from Arsenal's point of view, and I think they, they deserved at least parity in, 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 in the game, to be honest with you. And it was a really well worked move here, you know, nice ball in behind Saka with his turn of pace. He was pretty decent all night, comes back and gets a little bit calamitous here with Ricochets and uh, Aubameyang sets it up really well. And uh, on the overlap there, and he's in the perfect position to tap it in. And as I said, it was uh, the least that Arsenal deserved. I, mean, I was disappointed with Odegaard tonight. That was the one ball in the match that he gave that made a difference to the attack. So he's in that central position yeah. all the time. Good pass, spots the run of Cedric, who played reasonably well. Then Tierney came on and played well the last 15 minutes or so. And good knee finish, took them a while to get the goal, given the amount of possession they had. But it was important they got it quickly after the concession because I think morale was... Um, but the Benfica were on the up, having scored a goal, not playing too well. And if they got 10 minutes to dig in, they might have made it more awkward for Arsenal. And just speak about the young players there. Is that the problem, Son, the inconsistency of, of the play? Um, I suppose so, yeah. But I just think Arsenal are in a, in, in a difficult enough place. You know, they, they kind of hit rock bottom not too long ago. And they seem to be on the comeback trail. You know, Brian spoke uh, there before the break about Arsenal winning this competition, I don't think they have a, a, a cat and hills chance of, of, of actually winning this competition, you know. Why that? Why would you say that? Um, I just think that they're just not at that level. They haven't got enough good quality players, you know, they, they, they should get through this round. But as soon as they come up any, against any of the teams that Brian mentioned previously, they, they'll put them to the sword uh, almost certainly. Well, we saw them creating the chances, Brian, but they just weren't taking them. Is that going to be a problem in this competition? Do you have to take the chances that you're, you're creating, I suppose? Well, it depends on the number you get. If you make eight and you score two or three or four, it might be enough in a particular match. But against some of the opposition going forward in this competition, you won't get eight chances. You might get two or three in the game and you've got to take them. Surprising that Obama Yang missed the number he did. Yeah, he got two the hat trick at the weekend. He got hat trick at the weekend. I think he, he's back in form. He's had a... a a disappointing season, a lot of accusations. He got a brand new big contract and then he stopped scoring. And here he is. It's a relatively simple one and he was casual about it. Damon said that at half time. I think he was a little bit casual about it. It was such, a, such an easy chance for a player of his quality. This is a good little play, uh, little triangular movement. Again, he's in. Expect him to drill that into the bottom corner by the goalkeeper, a player of his experience, reputation and record of goal scoring, as Jerry said in commentary. Decided to check back here off his left foot onto his right foot and gave Arissimo a chance to intercept it and then um, stop him scoring. So, a surprisingly poor night for Obama Yang, I would say. Do you think there's any relation between him signing that contract and then suddenly taking... No, that was the suggestion at the time. I, I, I don't think that was the case. I mean, centre-forwards go through these periods of games where they don't score goals. And he's been playing on the left until recently. Lacazette has been occupying the centre-forward position. And you know, he's coming in off the wide position onto diagonal balls. Didn't get a lot of opportunities. He's having to chase up and down a little bit on the left-hand side as well. So he had a long streak. I think he went up about eight or nine games with no goal. And, and, and then people start bringing this issue up. It also was a funny one. He's the captain of the team. I always, I always have a view, unless, unless the centre forward, he can only be captain if he scored nearly every week and he's so outstanding. Like, say, for instance, Messi, in a way, he, he doesn't play the game as a captain, but he, he scores the goals, he makes the goals. I think the captain should always be someone who's looking at the play, can see the play, is in defensive or a mid-build position, and he's able to give out orders that affect the game. Obama Yang is the captain. He doesn't affect the game playing wide on the left, like an old, uh, an old, um, a Gaelic left corner forward sort of position. How do you affect the right back if you're up? And, the, and, that's, and when he's playing centre forward, you're looking back at people. You, you can't see, you see the game in a different life from that position. Isn't, can, isn't that indicative of Arsenal's problems though, Brian? That, that, that he's the man that's been given the armband. And you look at people like Xhaka who are potential leaders. I mean, I know he had his own problems as well, but when you go through that, you asked me earlier about the young players, there are some young players, but where are the leaders in that, in that team? 